I want to welcome you today to this study called God Has a Plan for You. This study is actually six lessons that are written by Donna Maricelli and narrated by Richard Tracy. Lesson number one talks about God and you, the intimate relationship. The Bible tells us in Song of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 6, His left hand is under my head, his right hand doth embrace me. So how do you perceive God? In comparison to Almighty God, creator of the universe, human beings appear so insignificant. God is often perceived as distant and preoccupied, almost like he's way up there, taking care of the world way down here. It is difficult to comprehend, but God desires a personal relationship with each of his creation. Psalm 8 verses 3 and 4 tell us, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the Son of Man, that you visit him. So how does God perceive you? Actually, believe it or not, you are his prized creation. God created man, the Bible tells us, in his own image, from Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. In Psalm 139, we find out that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God! Did you know that God created the individual snowflake with its own identification? No two are alike. Also, each fingerprint with its own personal stamp. God created every human being to be separate and unique. When you brushed or combed your hair this morning, did you know he subtracted every strand that fell to the floor? Matthew tells us in chapter 10, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Jesus emphasized the value of one human being when he compared himself to the good shepherd. He said 99 sheep were safe in the fold, but one was missing. So he searched until he found it then lovingly carried it on his shoulders to safety. Luke tells us the story in chapter 15 where it says, Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine. You are a living soul. God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, according to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. The soul is the spiritual house within every person designed for communion with God. It is where God desires to develop a timeless relationship that will continue after the physical body dies. The soul is also the void that yearns from birth for its creator. 
Did you know that spiritual hunger is universal from the primitive jungles of Africa to the isolated villages of the Amazon? One thing is common. Human beings, unlike any other creation, have been discovered seeking to communicate with God. It may have been through the worship of rocks, trees, the sun, and the list could go on and on. But John chapter 7 tells us, Jesus cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Because only God can satisfy the eternal soul. So what hinders this intimacy needed to satisfy both God and humanity? Sin, a holy God, and a sinful heart are simply incompatible. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 59 and verse 2, Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. The first man, Adam, sinned, severing his personal relationship with God, according to Genesis chapter 3. From that time, all human beings are born with a sinful nature. David said in Psalm 51, In sin did my mother conceive me. But God's love found a way. Even though humanity had sinned, God still loved them. He formed a plan to reconnect the severed relationship. John tells us in chapter 15, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life. Has anyone ever loved you so much that they would die for you? Jesus Christ did. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 1 John chapter 3 tells us he was manifested to take away our sins. Let's take a look at a personal application of this lesson. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, we read, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. We need to acknowledge that God loves you and is knocking at your heart's door. Then, we need to open the door because Jesus Christ is a gentleman and he will not intrude without an invitation. So we have to be the one to open the door. We need to invite him in because he longs to develop an intimate relationship with you. To be more than a casual acquaintance a living room guest. He yearns to fill every secret room of your heart. Every acorn contains an oak. And each year, countless acorns fall to the ground to be crushed underfoot or rot away. Amazingly, within each acorn, is the genetic components to become a towering oak if planted and nurtured in the appropriate soil. From birth, every living soul has the capacity for deep spiritual intimacy with its creator. Unfortunately, most human beings live and die without discovering their own divine potential. 
Let me ask you a question. How has this lesson changed your concept of God? If you'd like, you can pause and discuss this with the person that is with you teaching this lesson. Another question is, how would you describe your present relationship with him? What are your feelings about deepening that relationship? Identify anything that would hinder you from experiencing God in a more intimate way. Let's take a moment and pray together if you would. Let us thank him for loving us so much and for creating a special place to commune with us the soul for suffering pain and death to remove the sin that separated us from him, we will acknowledge our desire for a deeper relationship. Then ask for his leadership and guidance to develop the kind of intimacy he desires. Remember, the first scripture that we read in the very beginning was his left hand is under my head, his right hand doth embrace me. God really does want to have a relationship with us. So be confident and assured that God loves you. John chapter 6 tells us, him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Now I would like to give you a reading assignment for your homework, so to speak, for the coming week. The first scripture we'd like you to read is found in John chapter 4, verses 1 through 29, and it talks about God's love for a woman with a tarnished reputation. The second area that we want you to read is Luke 15 verses 1 through 24 that talk about the value of one. And finally, in Psalm 139 verses 1 through 18, God's awareness of the individual person. Let's look ahead, if we will, to the next lesson. In the next lesson, we will look at your decision about repentance. I can't wait for the next one. How about you?